welcome to the Runayas. Today we will be discussing MCQs based on current affairs of 28th of October 2022. So let's start with the first MCQ of the day. The term viral spillover risk was in use recently in the context of. Let's look at the statement and then we will find out the right answer. It is related with the cyber attacks by viruses. It refers to the term used to describe when a virus has overcome the many naturally occurring barriers necessary to spill over from one species to another. It refers to the spread of virus disease from one person to another. It refers to jumping of virus affecting animal to human. Now, what does this virus spill over risk means? When it Recently, in the context of the COVID-19 virus, it was seen that the, the frequency of the mutation is increasing. So, there are more risk and there are more chances that the virus disease is going to spread. That means it is going to break all the barriers and it is the natural barriers that are necessary to, to prevent the spillover effect. Spillover means to spread to other regions, right? To other parts. That's what the spillover would mean. So virus spillover would mean that the virus is going to break down all the barriers and it is going to spread to other species. So this is what the... This is what the term, you know, means that virus has overcome the many naturally occurring barriers which are necessary to spill over from one species to another. So B will be our correct answer. The second question of the day is, which of the following statement is correct regarding commodity fetishism? Now this article was published in the newspaper and what this commodity fetishism means, the term was coined by Karl Marx in one of his thesis in one of his writings and the term basically means when the labor of the person is commodified now what happens according to the theory of the Karl Marx uh, the alienation theory of the Karl Marx what happens the worker works in the factory and now the worker is alienated from from the, from the produce or loses the essence of its nature that is to work the exp work is an expression of innovation work is an expression of the human human so it loses everything and it gets alienated the worker gets alienated from the product from the process from the fellow beings from the society and this alienation what does it causes when the worker goes to the market it starts to glorify its own commodity that it had produced so basically commodity fetishism means the monetization of the labor and the glorification of the product rather than the producer so this is what the commodity fetishism means all right so let's see what are the statements and then we will choose the most appropriate one it refers to the pent up demand seen after the lifting off of lockdown well this is incorrect as i have explained to you the commodity fetishism it refers to the commodification of the labor of the worker this seems to be the more appropriate one but let's see the other statements as well it refers to the fondness observed among consumer for a particular product well it does not mean the fondness because it will the fondness the term fondness is not going to encompass the whole concept of the commodity fetishism as given by the karl marx However, we would consider this statement and let's we will see what the most appropriate statement will be. The fourth statement is the reference to an economic phenomenon of increased expenditure when the interest rates are low. Well, this is not what the commodification, commodity fetishism means, not even close to it. So in all these four statements, option B seems to be the most appropriate and most close to explaining what commodity fetishism is. So we will choose B as our correct option. Let's move on to the next question. Consider the following statements regarding hate speech. Now let me explain a little bit about the hate speech. Well, it has not been defined anywhere, neither in the Indian Penal Code, not even in the Constitution of India. In none of the statutory, in none of the statutes, hate speech has been defined. If there has been any definition or if there has been any context of this hate speech, then it could be derived from certain supreme court judgments but definition of a hate speech has not been given in any of the statutes so the first statement will be incorrect because it says that it is specifically mentioned in indian penal code no there is no definition of the, of the hate speech however however the law commission however the law commission does define what hate speech is Anything which is said, it can be verbal, it can be non-verbal, it can be written, it can be through signs, gestures, postures, images, anything. Which, what does it do? 
it enhances the enmity between the two communities that's what the hate speech would be so this is according to the law commission but not according to the indian penal code so first statement is incorrect the second statement says the provisions in the article 19 authorizes the state to restrict the freedom of speech and expression well the fundamental rights of in the fundamental rights given to the citizen of india are not absolute they can definitely be restricted on the certain on certain grounds which are specifically mentioned in the constitution and not on on and not on other grounds section so uh, second option is correct section 153 and 505 of the ipc deals with the inflammatory species uh, speeches this is correct section 153 talks about uh, it talks about the speeches speeches which are related with the creating enmity between the two communities and 505 deals with the penal provision with respect to the inflammatory speeches so option 2 and 3 the statement 2 and 3 are correct first is wrong so let's see what has been asked we have to select the correct answer 2 and 3 is our correct answer therefore b will be our answer let's move on to the fourth question right to information is a fundamental right which is derived from from for the constitution article from hoga this would be from not for by mistake sorry so right to information this has been derived from article 19 right in talks about the freedom of speech and expression and right to information is an is an important or integral right under this article of freedom of speech and expression because there cannot be right to freedom of speech and expression without the right to information so article 19 therefore c will be our correct option the fifth question talks about with reference to sampurna nand telescope consider the following statements it is a world class telescope located in nainital all right it was established by the isro in 1972 at manora peak it made breakthrough discovery of finding new rings around saturn and uranus well let's see well we'll talk about a little about the sampurna nand telescope it is 104 meter radius telescope located in nainital at manora p it was definitely established in the year 1972 but not by the isro but by the aries which is aryabhata research institute all right yes it did make these breakthrough discovery of finding the new rings around the saturn and uranus so we have to choose the correct answer by second statement is incorrect so first and third statements are correct so therefore b will be our correct answer let's move on to the statement 6 mission dev space was in news recently which of the following is correct regarding it it aims to open new frontiers of the space militarization techniques well according to the several treaty and the open space treaty and the um, and this outer space treaty in fact of 1950s by the united nation space militarization is not allowed any space militarization is prohibited also although the mission shakti if you remember which is the anti satellite uh, um, launch of the isro so there was one rocket which was launched to destroy this small satellite small satellite this was anti satellite uh, anti satellite missile mission shakti was there so yes India did India has demonstrated this particular technology however there is no space militarization allowed so any sort of space militarization is prohibited any sort of space militarization is what prohibited it aims to open new frontiers of the space militarization techniques this is incorrect it aims to develop innovative solutions for the armed forces It is an initiative of the Uni United Nations Security Council to prevent space militarization. Well, it could be, but we have to select the correct answer. It is a USA program to launch anti-satellite weapons. Well, the correct answer is B. The mission Dev Space was basically launched to have an innovative solution to the to the to armed forces to give them advanced technologies, etc., etc. Let's move on to the next question. Consider the following statements. HTT-40 is a basic training aircraft developed by the HAL for Indian Air Force. It will replace the aging fleet of HAL HPT-32 Deepak trainer service. It can attain maximum speed of 500 km/h and can achieve maximum distance of 1000 km. 
well what are these training aircrafts so when air force pilots they are trained they are not in the first uh, uh, first period of during the initial period of the training they are not given direct, they are not directly given the fighter aircrafts or the other aircrafts they are first trained on ground using these training aircrafts so what happens these training aircrafts are basically tied right and tied so that the pilot can have a practice so that the pilot can have a practice and become proficient and then this pilot will be shifted to the shifted to the sea uh, to this um, air training or um, you know the sky training so these training aircrafts are very important when it comes to the pilot training in india and hdd40 which is developed by the hal is one such training aircraft which is yes going going to replace the aging fleet of hal hpt32 deepak trainer service and it can attain the maximum speed of 450 km per hour not 500 km per hour and yes it can achieve a maximum distance of 1000 km so statement 3 was partially correct and first and two are correct statement therefore therefore we have to choose the correct statement one and two our correct answer so a will be our correct answer question number 8 says consider these statements regarding the pokali rice now what are these pokali rice pokali rice belong to the state uh, state of kerala and they were awarded this gi tag in the year 2007 if i am not wrong please check this but they are not awarded gi tag recently they have this gi tag since 2007 or something it is an ancient practice of alternative growing cycle of one fish and one rice now what happens in the coastal region in the coastal region of kerala so there is annual flooding of the fields now when the the fields are flooded with water with the sea water so there is fish culture fish fish culturing or fish cultivation and when the water recedes there is cultivation of the rice so there is an annual cycle there is alternatively fish and rice are cultivated so yes second statement is correct third statement is incorrect and yes these are the highly salt, resistant salt water variety now what happens because they are grown in the coastal area which free, uh, which frequently sees the flooding by the sea water therefore pokali rice are salt water resistant varieties so first and second statement as correct third statement is incorrect which of the following is the incorrect statement third was incorrect so b will be our answer with reference to the red sanders sometimes seen in the news consider the following statements it is a tree species found in a part of south india that's correct some of majority of the south in southern states like telangana andhra pradesh karnataka etc etc grow these varieties so yes first statement is correct it is one of the most important trees in the tropical rain forest areas of south india this is incorrect because red sanders it is dry deciduous all right so only one is our correct answer consider the following statements the last question of the day consider the following statements about somaskanda somaskanda is a particular form of representation of a shiva with parvati and skanda as a child yes in in our today's current affairs we did see it this family group depiction of shiva originated during the 6th to 8th centuries during period of pallavas in the south well this statement is also correct because the depiction of this kind that shiva lord shiva par goddess parvati or uma and skanda in between dancing in a castasi the depiction started in the 6th to 8th centuries during the pallava period however the bronze sculpturing however the bronze sculpturing reached its zenith during the chola period so both the statements are correct therefore b will be uh, c will be our correct answer so that's it for today thank you so much for watching tarun is have a nice day